What's good with it, Black Goose TV family? You know what I'm saying? It's good to be talking to y'all. You know what I'm saying? Like, I always enjoy doing these videos. I always enjoy, you know what I'm saying, talking boxing. And I try my best to deliver boxing news that maybe you haven't heard about on these other channels. Or even if maybe you have, at least give you a different perspective. I try to be unbiased as possible. Because at the end of the day, you know I say? I, I, I personally, I understand... That no matter who you favor, no matter who you like, idolize in this sport, you know what I'm saying? Both of them are putting their life on the line, so they both deserve the same respect. But this has to do with Deontay Wilder versus Luis Ortiz. Um, I made a couple videos when it came to their fight date, and their fight date continues to move. What's going on with them is very similar, in my opinion, uh, what was going on with the uh, Sean Porter Earl Spence fight. Where you saw um, probably two different fight dates and they all got moved. It ended up being official. The only thing difference between the two, which may not be the difference also, is just you can't really find any um, any information to really back what I'm about to say up. But uh, the Sean Porter Earl Spence fight, that continued to get moved because they were trying to make that pay-per-view. At first they were making it free TV. Uh, I believe it was Sean Porter's camp who first spoke out about that. I may be wrong. It may have been both camps, but I know for sure Sean Porter's camp spoke out. And they believe they should have been on pay-per-view. Um, so because of that, the, the, the fight date kept getting moved back. And now essentially it is going to be on pay-per-view. Now for the Wilder versus Ortiz rematch, I know it was already going to be pay-per-view. But I think um, it was being debated whether it was going to be on Showtime or not. Possibly Showtime or... Uh, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm not really. I'm not gonna say anything that I don't know, right? I'm just speculating when it comes to this particular point that I'm making, where it could possibly have to do with where it's going to be televised. But at the same time, no one ever wants to see a fight get pushed back the way it does, especially um, when you already had certain dates set for it, because that makes people very skeptical, or at least me myself. Uh, Skeptical if the actual fight's going to end up happening. I didn't really think the Sean Porter or Spence fight was going to happen, but because it did have to do with a particular reason, um, you could still have some hope, right? And now, and now they're fighting, right? But uh, this comes from BoxingNews24.com. Shout out to them. Uh, WBC heavyweight champion Deontay Wilder's rematch with Luis Ortiz has to take place by the end of November, and the fight's starting to look iffy. The date for the Wilder Ortiz. Matchup keeps on changing at this point. It wouldn't be surprising if the Wilder vs. Ortiz rematch doesn't take place at all. Tyson Fury has already revealed the rematch with Wilder is signed for February 22nd in Las Vegas, Nevada. The date means that it's going to be a quick turnaround for Wilder if he defends against the 40-year-old Ortiz in late November. So, if there's one thing I disagree about this particular article is that um, it's not. it wouldn't be surprising if Wilder doesn't fight Ortiz because Tyson Fury revealed it's already been the rematch with Wilder been signed. Now, I don't like to believe when a fighter announces that a, a fight. Uh, a, I'm sorry, I'm all over the place. I don't like to believe when a fighter announces that a fight has been confirmed for a particular date. The reason why is because if I don't hear from the other fighter within that same day or a day later, I be I begin to question that because you have to understand. If they're still trying to figure out who's the A side and who's the B side, when you put out reports like Fury did saying, oh, it's already good for February 22nd, he gets a certain amount of uh, uh, people behind him who's already fans of Fury and even those who may have been somewhat on the edge with Wilder or even fans of Wilder, like, yes, they're, they're, they're excited. So you have all these different reports. You have people talking about it being on his date. And that puts pressure on Wilder's team to basically be like, all right, Let's go ahead and do it because if everyone already be like, you know what I'm saying, people are already going to fill away. If this takes enough, if this gets enough steam behind it, which it probably won't, it, it never really goes like that at the end of the day. People understand this is all part of the negotiation process. But if it gets enough steam uh, behind it, you know what I'm saying, it puts Wilder's team in a corner where maybe they're like, oh, well, you know what I'm saying, we have to hurry up and we have to decide what we're going to do. we, we got to make it sooner than later uh, because everyone's going to make us, uh, they're going to look at us in the negative light, da da da, da. But, I, you know, obviously Wilder's at a point in his career, while his team's at a point where they don't care about any of that. This is all part of the negotiation process, in my opinion, so I don't ever uh, believe when a fighter says something about something being signed, you don't hear anything from the other side. It's just all part of the battle to get the narrative in their favor. Um, so 
That's why I don't agree with this saying it wouldn't be surprising if the Wilder Ortiz rematch doesn't take place. It would be surprising for me because I really truly believe Wilder wanted that wanted to fight Ortiz again because he really wanted to show that um you know what I'm saying it was a tough fight for him in the first fight. So the second uh, fight I think he really wanted to you know what I'm saying make an exclamation point on that similar to the uh, Stravine fight. So I want to talk a little bit about the possibility of that fight not happening. Now, first and foremost, Black Goose TV family, I want to know from y'all, do you think this fight is going to happen or not? And if it doesn't happen, would you be discouraged? If it does happen, would you be tuning in? What do you guys think about all this information? Let me know y'all opinion, obviously, because I want to hear from y'all. It's a challenge about y'all, so let me know. Don't ever hold back. Uh, I want to hear everything, you know what I'm saying? So be respectful. You know what it is. Black Goose means positivity. But my personal opinion, I'm going to give my opinion on this because... I do feel like I need to put this out there. You know what I'm saying? Think about this. Tyson Fury has his, and his team has shown that they are not going to make any effort, as of now, things may change later, but any effort into making fights with fighters who at least us in the U.S. feel are um, top-tier fighters. And maybe not even top-tier, but at least someone we've seen fight and respect and be like, okay, I like that name. Let's see what you can do in there. I like it's, it's very obvious that Tyson Fury and his team, Bob Arum, they're still continuing the same route as if he was still signed to Frank Warren overseas. If I was Frank Warren right now, I'd be like, why did you, why did you choose to go sign over to Bob Arum if you're going to be doing the same things I'd have done for you, brother? And I'd probably give you better talent. And what does that mean? Give you fights against certain fighters that us in the U.S. doesn't know about, but still allows him to stay ready for that Deontay Wilder rematch. But the whole point of him signing with top ranking Bob Arum was so he can become more popular amongst the U.S. fans. So he can get that market, that marketability in the U.S. Because that's ESPN, correct? But the fact that they continue to pick fighters, I'm not discrediting what they can bring to the table. I'm I'm sorry. Actually, that is what I'm discrediting. I'm not discrediting their skill, their grit, their willingness to fight, what they've been through. Because I know all y'all killers, I understand that. But when we're talking about the business side of things and what's going on here, is we don't know who these fighters are that they're picking for Fury to fight in the U.S. And the whole thing about him going to top rank is being is so he'll become a U.S. star. So, what I'm saying and why this has a connection with what's going on with Wilder and Ortiz fight, there's a possibility that Wilder's sitting back is like, look, I thought we were going to do everything we can to make our rematch the biggest thing ever, and that's why we ended up delaying it from the original date that we had or expected it to be. Because it was supposed to be, ooh, first fight draw, back to back, let's go right back at it. That's how they made it seem. But then, you know, they said, well, Fury signed with ESPN. Now there's a little wrench in the road. Both sides said that. Not just Fury's side. That's what Wilder's side said, too. So now we're at the point where we're looking at it from, at least me and myself, the Canelo Triple G uh, uh, perspective. But we're going to try and build this next fight as big as it possibly can. We need it bigger than the one before. And the only way we can do that, you can even say the Floyd Manny Pacquiao rematch, if it ever happens. But before we can do that, we got to make sure we put in the work. So everyone knows we are who we are. What do you mean by that? The most dominant heavyweight to ever fight. The most dominant middleweight to ever fight. So we have to fight competition. That's why Oscar De La Hoya came at Triple G. Like, yo, you gotta, you gotta tell every, you gotta show everyone who's down you, especially now that you with the zone and now you're trying to cross over into the U.S. markets. You gotta show everybody that you are that legit top guy in the middleweight. Still, you feel me? So you need to fight that guy that everyone at least in the U.S., knows about because that's the market they're trying to tap into. And it's the same thing with uh, what's going on in the Wilder Fury uh, saga. While uh, there's a possibility, this is this is opinionated right here, what I'm saying, there's a possibility why he's like, hmm, okay, I see you fight next. Even though you were saying you were going to fight somebody, uh, you, there was a lot of other names out there. You know what I'm saying? Jennings. So people were saying Jennings. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but either way it goes, I'm like, look, Wilder's sitting there looking at the situation, he's saying this. Why should I fight Ortiz again, which is very risky? 
and continue to go out of my way to prove I'm the best, and you're not doing that. You seem content, you and your team seem content with being like, all right, we're just going to get whoever we want and whoever we feel like is a good matchup for Fury. Make this fight happen. Get a W, hopefully. And just wait on this rematch with Wilder. Because that's the big money fight. While Wilder is more looking at it perspective, at least this is what it seems like to me, I'm going to try and fight the best they have to offer. But at this point, it's like, whoa, Fury's not doing that. Why should I? If he's already talking about a certain date and he wants his rematch, then all right, bet I'll be on board with that. This is all speculation, what I'm saying right here. This may not be true. Probably not true. I'm just talking. I just think it's an interesting perspective. I think it's a very interesting thing, a very interesting insight on, you know what I'm saying, negotiations. Who's willing to take the biggest risk? And is the biggest risk worth it? When at the end of the day, we know we're going to fight each other no matter what. Back on TV all day, Mr. Positivity. Stay up, y'all.